Okay, so hey guys, and welcome to the second season in the F1 Manager Minardi Manager Career Mode. And here we are for the start of the 2000 season, which hopefully can go as well as the 1999 season went for us, which is brilliant in comparison, well, considering the parts and the people that we have with us. But now it's um, the start of a new era, as you can see, we got all these highly professional, well, I was going to say highly professional people, oh, and Green isn't, um, but always high, um, big, big professionals in the sport, and these brilliant um, people working alongside us. We should be doing better this year. Um, so let's just look, performance review, we got Marco Rossi telling us that that um, we did well enough last year, so he's going to keep us on. And then objectives, we've got to finish sick for this year. Sick for the constructors. Should be doable. We've got better drivers. Um, we've got a better engine, better brakes. Better technical director. We should be doing well this season. And sick for as possible, considering we came 8th last year. So... There you go, we got to come sick for this year. Um, yeah, and I know I keep on saying I won't do test days, but because I kind of like want to get your guys um, ideas as to where you reckon we'll come in the season, we've got to finish sixth is what they um, is what the board are saying. But I'm going to be going to the Catalonia test day, and I just want um, just so you guys can like get a feel for how the season's going to go. And I said in a channel update recently that. Um, Uploads aren't going to be as frequent because I've got exams going on, etc. So, I'm going to do this test day, and then I want you guys to put down the comments guessing, judging by the results from the test day, where you think will be in comparison to the rest of the field, and who you reckon the best and worst team will be. Um, so, we're heading off to that test day, but I've just got a head on... Well, actually, I've just got to outline um, some things. So, I know this time... Um, in the first season, I arranged all his contracts in secret, um, and then obviously drip fed them throughout the season. But I'm telling you right now, these contracts, we've got the best engines in the game, we've got the best electronics, and we've got the best brakes, or at least the joint best brakes. So all of these won't be changing, so they will be staying the same. Um, and we've got the best designer this year, and we've got the best commercial manager. Now, so the only positions that are going to change this year are the technical director, and the drivers so I will be changing them and I am going to keep them a secret as I did last time so yeah but the thing is even though we got Neil Oatley this year and his chassis skills 100 research skill 99 which is great um, because as you remember last year our chassis well we had last year we had Gabriel Tradozzi and now he's off at Saub I believe um, but obviously because we had Gabriel Tradozzi with us last season designing this year's chassis um, it's not particularly good. If I just look, the chassis is rated 91, which is one better than the chassis last year. The chassis last year is rated 90, so it is an improvement. But even though we got Neil Oatley of us, we won't be having a top-class chassis, because obviously it wasn't designed by him. But we have got him to be researching all of these parts, which should go down well. Um, I see him researching brilliant front wings, rear wings, suspension, etc., um, so that's one thing I want to make clear, is the chassis is still Gabriel Tradozzi chassis. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to make some changes to who's allocated to what. I'm going to add more designers to all of these parts. And I'm going to cut to um, any more news. And then once I've done all the news, that's up between now and... Now and whenever. Um, now and, yeah, till just before the first race. Actually... That is a point. I've looked through this calendar, um, and you may notice that the race order has changed um, from last year, which is really weird. But I'll just, I'll just quickly take you through the difference. So the first race is Australia, which is the same as last year. The second race is Brazil, which is the same as last year, and the third race again is in Imola, which is the same as last year. Now the changes start from the fourth race onwards. And I have no idea why they changed the calendar. But the fourth race this year is Silverstone, which is a bit odd considering last year the fourth race was Monaco. Um, and then the next race is Spain, which is the same as last year. Then it's Nürburgring this year, whereas last year it was Canada for, um, for the sixth race. Then it's Monaco, which was the fourth race last year. Um, then it's Canada, which was the sixth race last year and now is the eighth. 
Then it's France, which was the seventh race last year. Yeah, it was the seventh race last year. It's now the ninth. Um, going on from that, we go to Austria, which was the ninth race last year, and is now the tenth. Then we got Germany, which was the tenth, is now the no, which yeah, which was the tenth, is now the eleventh. Hungary was the eleventh, is now the twelfth. Belgium was the twelfth, it's now the thirteenth. Um, similarly, Italy was the for Italy was the thirteenth, it's now the fourteenth. Japan was the finale last year, and it's now the second to last round. The last round being Malaysia, which was the second to last round the previous year. So I have no idea why the calendar's changed, but it has. So I just thought I'd outline those changes for you. Um, so we got a changing calendar. But we get so in this episode, I'm going to be highlighting all the news that happens between now and the 10th of March. And then once I've gone through all that news, I'm going to click back and I'm going to show you a report of the test day, um, the pre-season test day in Spain, which I've said so I'm going to go to it at the expense of 40 grand. So yeah, well, yeah, I'll cut to some news. Um, yeah, as and when I get some. So I'll see you then. Oh god, I forgot about this. Um, okay, hey guys, um, I forgot about this actually when I've done this, but, um, I'll let you into the secrets that I tried to get Damon Hill as our driver number two, um, and I forgot anybody who's a world champion in this game, so that's Michael Schumacher, Mika Hakkinen, Damon Hill, and Jacques Villeneuve will never accept the driver number two position, and I tried to get Damon Hill as driver number two, and... He's being a little bit snobby about it because he's a world champion, so he's being a little bit snobby. It's sort of understandable, but at the same time... <sighs> so I'm going to have to try and find a new driver number two, because all the other positions have been agreed. I've done contracts and I've arranged them already. So I've just got to find someone else for the driver number two. So I'm going to quickly do that, and then I'll see you guys when any more news comes. So I'll see you then. Oh god, <laughs> um, okay, hey guys, so, remember last year how Benetton Sports Systems stopped sponsoring Benetton and started sponsoring Williams? So that was one of the highlights this season, that actually, that made it onto my um, end of season montage for last year. Um, well, they've, they've stuffed that and they're now sponsoring Prost. Just never ceases to amaze me. So, there you go, um, and I'm going to have to do a cut here. Just because there's spoilers in this other section of news, so I'm going to cut to see if there's any more news, um, and I'll just leave you this beautiful image. So I'll see you then. Okay, so hey guys, so I've just done the test day, but obviously I'll, I'm, I'm going to show you the test day and its results um, at the end of this episode. I'm going to edit it in to be at the end, but it was uh, promising, let's say. But anyway, Neil Oatley... Um, hopefully should have improved the um, the promise of the Minardi by designing new front wings and rear wings and this just shows really you know brand new design and already new front wings and rear wings and that just shows really um well Gabriel Trudozzi was okay for us his lack of design capabilities and research capabilities may have hindered us as a team in the fact look so these rear wings and front wings were rated 91 before they're now going to be rated 92 and so Already, that's why it's difficult to gauge the test day's results when you later see them, because already I've improved my aero parts. The teams further on may have improved their aero parts, as well. It's difficult to gauge, really, um, as the teams develop as the season goes on. But anyway, um, I'll cut to any more news as it comes up. So I'll see you then, designed. Okay, so hey guys, so we got some more news. Well, it's just AP have sent us their second model of brakes and Magneti Morelli have sent us their second model of electronics which should be better than the last ones, let me just have a quick look so their first model was rated um, 95 and their second model was rated 96 in terms of the electronics now if we look at the brakes the first model, no the first model was rated 95, the second model is now rated 96 so again it's difficult to gauge test day results because now the brakes and electronics have approved as well as the front and rear wings so essentially half the cars improved since then which is why it's difficult to gauge the test day results you know as in real life because we've already developed as a team 
But yeah, I'll see if there's any more news, and obviously if there is, then I'll cut you to it. So I'll see you then. Oh god, the developments keep on coming, guys. Cause um, anyway, yeah, hey, um, the Lotley's design new barge boards now, which is crazy. So <sighs> he's such a good designer. He is much better than Gabriel Chidozzi. We're definitely going to be keeping him. Um, obviously, I've already said we have because I've already arranged contracts. He's the best designer. Well, actually, Rory Brin is the joint best designer, but... Well, they're both rated 99. Rory Brin is marginally better at research, but slightly worse at chassis. And Neil Oatley is slightly better at chassis, but obviously slightly worse at research skills. But even though he's slightly worse at research skills, he's still already researched no front rear... Front wing, rear wing, and barge boards. And obviously next year when we get his design chassis, we're really going to leap forward. Um, but yeah, so that's more news, more development for Minardi, which is showing to be very promising for next year. Um, well, no, the start of this season, rather. So that's great. And anyway, I'll cut to um, any more news as and when it comes. So I'll see you then. Oh, no, not Rossi's. They used to sponsor us. I miss Rossies. I miss the joke Ross we made on Rossies about how their inline skates that they're selling are quicker than our car. Oh, I miss that. Those are fun times. Anyway, they're going to Pross, which arguably were our main rivals last year. Um, but yeah, that's really all it is. I'm just speculating on news because there's not even that much at the minute. So I'm just constantly speculating and kickers. Oh, another one of our former sponsors, um, and our sponsoring another team. Obviously, we ran out of space for kickers, unfortunately. We've now got PlayStation, obviously. Um, which, when you see it at the test day, the PlayStation sponsor, when you see it on the car, is very striking. Um, so there you go. But anyway, yeah. Kickers was also striking. They were also great, but they've gone to Williams now. And, yeah, that's it. We ran out of news. I'll just click on again. See if there's any more news, because it, because I've changed it now, so it doesn't, advance a week, it advances every time I get a new email or any time a new bit of news pops up, so uh, the loading screens are quicker and Mercedes-Benz, um, they sell their second model of engine, now Mercedes-Benz, they are by far the best engines in the game, but what's really weird about them is their first model of engine which obviously we took to the test day, which you'll see later on their first model of engines, they rated 93 which, I'm pretty certain even our Ford Z-Tech engines were rated better than that. I think, I'll put up a screenshot now of how good our engines were rated, but I think they were around that, better than that. I don't know, whatever. Um, you'll be seeing the answer on screen, but... So there's their first um, engine, which is only rated 93, which is atrocious considering they're the best engine supply in the game, but their second mold lump jumps up from 93 to 94. <laughs> you see, I built it up then. No, but seriously, they, um, you do get to see massive jumps later on in their performance. So, it's not that powerful at the minute, but their third, and especially their fourth model, which is their last one they'll send us, has such a big improvement in performance, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, hopefully it won't be too far into the season that they send us their fourth model of engine, which is basically dominant um, over everyone else. But anyway, yeah, so, um, that's that, and, uh, you've sat through quite a few loading screens of me, actually, but, um, yeah, I'll see if there's any more news, and I'll cut to you, oh, well, I'll cut to it as and when it comes, so I'll see you then. Okay, so, hey guys, so we have got some more news, so AP Brakes are sent their, um, third model of, uh, um, Brakes, which have gone up by another rating, same for their Magnetic Rallies, um, they'll both send us six models of either electronics or Brakes throughout the season, which go up one each time until they get to 99 is it? or 100 might be 100 actually, yeah it's 100 because Magneti Millies were 100 last year anyway, New Lopley he's designed the third model of front wings and the third model of rear wings already so this guy is just on fire with researching stuff and think about it so since that test day we've gone from having the first model of front and rear wings which Owen Green tested for us to um well, yeah, we've so gone from the first model to the third model. So basically, the uh, Neil Oatley, our new designer, is on fire with these upgrades. It's unbelievable. But anyway, yeah, I'll cut to any more news as and when it comes. So I'll see you then. <laughs> okay, so hey guys, so Neil Oatley, 
He's he's brilliant. So he designed us new barge boards now, which is unbelievable. Um, how quick he is with research and stuff. I think that Roy Brin is slightly better at it as well, which is beggar's belief, really. And where's Roy Brin at now? He is at, um, let me just check. Yeah, and Roy Brin's at Jordan now. So they are extremely lucky people to have him there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the race is in, I think, three weeks' time. So, yeah, there's got three more weeks to advance through. With God knows how many more extra upgrades we have to the car. Um, anyway, yes, I'll see you then. Oh, my word. <laughs> And only a few days later, Neil Lokley has designed new suspensions uh, and new side pods. This guy, this this guy, he's designed at least an advanced, at least one advanced version of every single component on the car. This is brilliant. I love Neil Lokley now. Absolutely love him. Um. So he's really coming to play. Our suppliers haven't really come to play quite yet. I mean, they have improved, but really they don't give us their properly amazing parts until later on in the season. Um, I suppose the same for Neil Oatley, actually. Obviously, he'll keep on designing for a whole season. But we got at least, uh, well, an advanced component of each of these components, which are insane. Gabriel Chidozzi. This is probably how much work Gabriel Chidozzi did in the entire season. And they look at least on it before the season even started. Just unbelievable. Anyway, yeah, okay, um, I'll cut some more news as and when it comes. So I'll see you then. Okay, so hey guys, so we've got to the 9th of March, which is the day before the first race of the season. Um, and that's all the news I've shown you. Um, what I haven't shown you, though, is the test day, because obviously I want to get new all the news out of the way first. So you'll be seeing the test day now, and just so, as a reminder, um, during that test day, all the parts we got were only, you know, the first model of um, all the aero parts and the first model of all the, you know, engines, supply, um, engines, brakes and electronics. So, the car has improved massively since then. Um, but yeah, I'll take you to the test day results now. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, I'll take you to the test day report. So, you can head on to that now. Okay, so hey guys, so we've had the pre-season test day around Catalonia in Spain, and it's just ended, and it's really given us a big insight into the F1 season coming up this year, in the year 2000. And it's a chance where we get to see the test drivers really flex their muscles, and it's a chance where we really get to see the cars and the manufacturers, and see how well they've improved in comparison to the competition from the previous year. And while I'm going through the results, I may as well remind you of the changes that have occurred to each team as I read through the results. So the team that set the fastest lap time in Catalonia this test day was Luca Padoa in the Ferrari. Obviously the former Minardi driver who scored 4 points famously for Minardi has now gone to Ferrari to be their test driver and it's crucial the fact that he is a former race driver in these cars because that could have given them an advantage which is why Ferrari tops the timesheets. Although the fact that Ferrari top it by 3 seconds in comparison to their nearest rival, it does look like Ferrari might dominate this season. And as a reminder, the Ferrari team this year will look like this. Michael Schumacher is driver number 1, Neil McEwen, rather controversially, the former EA employee himself, is going to be driver number 2, with Luca Padoa, as we can see, the former Minardi driver, as the test driver. They could be using their Ferrari engine, as they always do, they're going to be using Brembo brakes. They're going to be using the best electronics, the Magneti Morellis. Their chief designer this year is Nick Worth, but obviously, because Rory Brin was with the team last year and thus designed this year's chassis, that is a Rory Brin designed chassis on the car. But Nick Worth is with the team to design next year's chassis and obviously this year's aero parts. The technical director is Adrian Newey, who rather interestingly left from their main roles McLaren to join. Ferrari, which is a very interesting move there, and their commercial manager is Laz Olsen. Second place this test date was Olivier Panis in the McLaren. Now I should point out that again, Olivier Panis was a race driver last year for the Prost team. And while he didn't do as well as Luca Padoa last year, in fact Olivier Panis didn't score any points, 
he has still got experience with the cars which will help him as ability to drive them and could also explain why he's second on the timesheets and why the two former race drivers are actually topping the timesheets. Anyway, McLaren have made some massive changes in time for the season. Giancarlo Fisichello is their driver number one and Johnny Herbert is their driver number two. With the absence of Mika Hakkinen being profound considering he was the world champion last year and the year before, it is very odd as to why McLaren didn't retain Mika Hakkinen, but personally, we really don't know why. It may be contractual issues, but McLaren didn't retain Mika Hakkinen. No other team decided to snatch him up, and it is a massive loss to F1 there. But he is replaced by Fizzy Keller. The test driver, as you can see, is Olivier Panis. Their engine, they went from what is widely considered to be the best engine, which is the Mercedes-Benz, to the second worst engine, which is Ford ZTEX. And why they've made that move is completely unknown, but the fact they're still second in the timesheets shows that it may not have been a bad switch after all. Although how they are three seconds behind their nearest rivals Ferrari is slightly worrying for the team which won the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship last year. Their brakes are AP Racing brakes, their electronics are TAG electronics. Their chief designer is Andy LaFleming, but obviously Neil Oatley was at the team last year, Neil Oatley has now moved to Minardi. But, because he was at the team last year, he designed this year's chassis, much like Rory Brin at Ferrari. Their technical director is Bernard Duo, and their commercial manager is Herve Bodinier. The surprise third place this test day was actually Luciano Berti in the Stewart GP, which is a massive surprise for a team which really were kind of had variable pace last year. And although they did come fourth in the constructors last year, the fact that they came third this test day shows that they have improved on their competition to come from fourth to third. Now as a reminder, Stewart's test driver, as you can see, who was at this test day was Luciano Berti, but their driver number one is the former Ferrari driver who came fourth in last year's Drivers' Championship, Eddie Irvine. The second driver is the former Pross driver who didn't score any points, but has now moved to Stewart in the hope of getting points, it's Jano Trulli. Their engines are Peugeot engines, they got AP Racing brakes, Fisty and Electronics. Their chief designer is Gavin Fisher, the technical director is Leo Ress, and their commercial manager is Ian Phillips, the former Jordan commercial manager. Now the biggest improvement of the lot is Minardi, who came fourth this test day. Now that is pace never seen from Minardi, and obviously this is the second year where Pierce Luton Rules is managing Minardi, and his new managerial style seems to have really improved the team which has consistently been at or near the bottom of the timesheets for years in F1. And what's even more impressive is how their test driver is Owen Green and he is a former EA employee and as such has no experience with these cars unlike everyone else at this test day. So the fact that he came fourth even though his rating as a driver is pretty low and the fact he has no previous experience with these cars is amazing. Although the fact they do have the best engines this year, which is Mercedes-Benz engines, and are the only team to have those engines, could explain where their sudden boost in performance to the rest of the grid came from. As a reminder though this year, their driver number one is Damon Hill, the driver number two is Mika Salo, so we'll see the return of him on the grid, and obviously as mentioned their test driver is Owen Green. Their engines are Mercedes-Benz engines, their brakes are AP Racing brakes, their electronics are Magneti Morellis, their chief designer is Neil Oatley, and obviously, again, just to reiterate, their chassis they're using this year was designed by Gabriel Tredozzi last year, but Neil Oatley will be helping them with the aero parts this year, which should massively help the team in the aero side of things as well as in the engine side of things. Their technical director is former Jordan technical director Mike Gascoigne, and their commercial manager is Stefano Domenicali. So there are some impressive names on that list working at Minardi this year, and with them coming fourth this test day, we really could see them improve on the rest of the field. Fifth is Bruno Jonquera and the Jordan, and Jordan coming fifth is really disappointing considering they came third last year in the constructors, but you never know, this is test day, and it is difficult to gauge the performance of this year's grid from a test day, but nevertheless Jordan came fifth. With their driver number one being last year's driver number two, Heinz Howard Frentzen. The driver number two is former Stewart driver, Rubens Barrichello. Their test driver, as mentioned, is Bruno Jonquera. Their engine is Ford ZTEX, again widely reckoned to be one of the worst engines you can get. In fact, actually the worst engine you can get apart from Arrows. 
but they are the same ones that McLaren are using, and with McLaren coming second, this might not be a bad move for Jordan, especially if Ford can get behind the engine and improve it massively. The brakes are Brembo brakes, electronics are Honda PGMs, their chief designer is former Ferrari designer Rory Bren, who's going to help him with the aero parts obviously. The technical director is Malcolm Ostler, and the commercial manager is Jim Wright. Sixth place this test day out of obviously the 11 teams taking part was Stephen Watson in the Benetton. And with Benetton coming sixth in the constructors last year, it seems like they may not have improved on their competition a great deal. Although they have had some radical changes within their team, obviously removing Giancarlo Fisichella as he's gone to McLaren and they've got ex-McLaren driver David Coulthard as their n number one driver and their number two driver is John Alesi, the former Sauber driver. The test driver is Stephen Watson, their engines are super tech engines, they're using Brembo brakes, Magneti Morelli electronics, the chief designer is Rob Taylor, their technical director is Pat Simmons and the commercial manager is Marco Fesser. Seventh for this test date is a very disappointing result for Williams who came fifth in last year's Constructors' Championship. They seem to have lost place on the rest of the field massively, with their test driver being Thomas Enger. It's unknown whether it's his performance or the car's performance that has let the side down here. Nevertheless, Williams do seem to show some elements of promise this year, with their driver number one being Takaki, who set a brilliant result at Imola last year, four arrows to get two points, and also did very well in the practice and qualifying four arrows in Monaco. So, Takaki may prove himself, and Williams are definitely giving him that shot being the driver number one there, with their driver number two being their former driver number one, Ralph Schumacher. The test driver is Thomas Enger. Their engines are super techs, which do seem to have an advantage on a large part of the field, such as McLaren and Jordan's Ford Z Tech engines, with both teams being big rivals for Williams last season. It does show promise, although the super tech engine hasn't really performed so far this test day. The brakes are AP Racing, their electronics are Magneti Morelli's, which are both the best brakes in electronics, so that shows promise for the team. The chief designer is Loach Bigoy. The technical director is former Ferrari technical director Ross Braun, which should really boost the team along. And the commercial manager is former Minardi commercial manager Massimo Cusimano. And with Minardi improving so much on the field, probably due to the extra money they had, this could be the start of Williams' revival, even if they did only come 7th this test day. 8th this test day was Patrick Lamarie in the Prost. And Prost had a very disappointing season last year, scoring no points whatsoever, the only team to not score any points. With them coming 8th this test day and beating some of their other rival teams, we could see them actually score some points this year. As a reminder, their driver number 1 is Pedro Diniz, their driver number 2 is Ricardo Zonta, which is ironic actually, because Ricardo Zonta was very disappointed for BAR last year and also didn't score any points. So, having a team that didn't score any points combined with a driver who didn't score any points last year could be an odd matchup for Prost. The engines, Peugeot engines, obviously sharing that French bond that Alain Prost and Peugeot have. Their brakes are Brembo brakes, their electronics are TAG electronics. The chief designer is Andrew Green, their technical director is former Minardi technical director Gustav Brunner, and their commercial manager is Ekrim Sami. Ninth this test day was Sauber with their test driver being Nick Heidfeld. Now Nick Heidfeld does show promise with him being a test driver for McLaren last year. So it is disappointing how he fished so low down, although that could be testament to the Sauber car rather than his driving. And as a reminder, Sauber have Alexander Wurtz as driver number one. They have Zanardi who I wrongly stated didn't have a drive for next year. He actually does have a drive for next year, or rather this year, and that is at Sauber. So, while he was quite disappointing last year, he might be able to revitalise his career with Sauber giving him that second chance that Williams haven't. Their engines are Patronus engines, much like last year. Their brakes are Brembo's, their electronics are Magneti Morelli's. Their chief designer is former Minardi chief designer, Gabriel Chidozzi. Their technical director is Gary Anderson, and their commercial manager is Rob Armstrong. Tenth and second to last this test date was BAR. Now this is really weird considering BAR started last year with the most amount of starting funds and how they finished 7th in the Constructors last year is quite disappointing for the team. Although as I say that could be testament to Stephanie Cesarin's driving and rather than the BAR's car. So how have BAR spent their funds? 
Well, firstly, they've retained their driver number one, Jacques Villeneuve. They've shook up their driver number two spot after Ricardo Zonta rather underperformed, scoring no points, with their driver number two being Laurent Redon. Their engines are Supertech engines, much like Williams, and with Williams also struggling this test day, there might be something wrong with the Supertech engines, which hopefully they can sort out in time for the first race of the season. The brakes are AP Racing, their electronics are Magneti Morellis, which are the best in both of their fields. The chief designer is Mark Smith, the technical director is the former Williams technical director, Patrick Head, and the commercial manager is David Warren. Now, last this test day, seemingly rather unsurprisingly, although they did do well in the constructors last year, finishing 10th, which is very surprising considering the troubles the team went through last year with their engine sorties and generally the lack of power from the engine as well as its shortage. But Gaston Mazzucane, their former rival, which was Minardi, their former rival's test driver has now joined the team and it seems to have really underperformed, or that could be the car underperforming, as their best lap time was two and a half seconds adrift of BAR's lap time and almost 10 seconds away from Ferrari's lap time. Or, rather interestingly, six seconds away from their former rival's lap time. So how Minardi have improved so much and their rival's hours haven't could be testament to the managerial skill of both managers. Anyway, next year, Arrows, they've retained their driver number one, which is Pedro De La Rosa. They've got their former rival's driver number two, Mark Genet. Their engines are Arrows engines, obviously, for financial reasons, to save money. They've, they kept using their own engines, despite the issues they had with them. So hopefully they should have improved the performance of their engines and hopefully their manufacturing capability with them. Their brakes are AP Racing brakes. Their electronics are Tags. Their chief designer is Andrew Tilly. The technical director, Mike Coughlin and the commercial manager is Richard West. So that's the end of the test day. Those are the results on screen. That's the timing um, screen so you can see for yourself. And this has been a very interesting test day. And that is a gauge, although it might be wildly wrong and obviously with teams constantly developing their aero parts and obviously the brake supplies, engine supplies and electronic supplies constantly improving their engines, brakes and electronics as the season goes on. We may see teams like Minardi of their Mercedes-Benz engine leap up the field as Mercedes develops their engine to become superior to all the other engines. Although we may see other teams fall down, we may see McLaren fall down, we may see Stewart rise, we may see Ferrari do disappointingly. Remember Ferrari and McLaren have the advantage of having former race drivers as their test drivers, so it's really difficult to gauge who is the best, so we just have to wait two months to get the final confirmed results of who is the best and worst team when we start the first race of the season at Australia. Okay, so um, so hey guys, so did you find those results interesting? Because I certainly did. I mean, Minardi coming fourth was unbelievable, to be honest. Um, I know we got the best engines um, and the best brakes and the best electronics and some brilliant drivers, including a former world champion who's a little bit snobby, we found out this episode. Um, but yeah, fourth was brilliant for us. What I found more surprising was... Um, with Stuart coming third. I don't know, but um, what I want you guys to do um, before I end off this episode is put down in the comments your predictions for the first race or your predictions for the championship. So where do you reckon we're going to come and who do you reckon is going to win? Because obviously you know the drivers, you know the personnel who's at each team. So I want you to give your predictions as to where we'll come, who you think the winner will be, who you think the loser will be, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, at least at the minute, but you never know. Arrows might have improved. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, this has been a crazy first part of the episode. Um, one thing I do want to quickly point out is, if you guys didn't see my season montage, and I'll be putting... Well, I'm doing like an outro thing, only for this episode, I'll see how well it goes. But I'm putting like an outro card, there'll be... And there'll be um, a part of my season montage which I really want you guys to see because that season montage is brilliant. Genuinely, I think it's one of my favourite videos I've ever made, um, which went over last season. So if you haven't seen that, then you got to see that. And another video I want to um, draw you guys' attention to is a great um, a great friend of mine, YouTuber F1 Games PlayStation. Um, he's a great mate of mine. We talk on Twitter all the time, and um, he's YouTuber. He's only got 
80 subscribers at the time of recording. Um, but he made a video in response to the rather prominent issues that Arrows had last um, last year, you know, with their engines and Takaki's whole issue last year. Um, he made a video about that, which is brilliant, I think. It's, um, it's a really great video. I personally enjoyed it. I mean, it may be because it's about my Full Manager series. But I'm going to link you to that because he needs some more subs. Um, plus, also, the video's great. So I'm going to link you to both of those videos and show you um, teasers of those videos in this outro screen. But hopefully... Yeah, so watch both of those videos if you haven't already. Put down in the comments who you, um, where you reckon we're going to come, where you reckon the rest of the field's going to come. And generally, just look forward to the start of the season, the season with the revamped calendar. But Australia's still the first race of the season. I mean, why wouldn't it be? It's brilliant. Um, so, I'll see you guys for that race. Um, yeah, so I'll see you around Albert Park. And I hope you guys look forward to it. Anyway, and I'll take you to the outro card with the two videos I want to link you to now. So make sure you watch both of them. Make sure you watch the next episode. And I'll see you then. All change at Minardi. With the start of the new Formula 1 season just a few weeks away, Minardi has surprised everyone by enlisting the services of PS Lutheran Rules, much as expected of the new team manager from Marco Rossi. Our objectives are to finish 10th or higher in the Constructors' Championship, which should be doable, but Arrows intend to finish 6th or higher in the Constructors' Championship.